Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for the mid-chapter 2 test review. Let's get right into it. Um, just a quick note that the problems are all going to have timestamps in the description so you'll be able to see uh, straight to the problem that you might be struggling with instead of watching the entire video. So make sure you go to those timestamps. Let's go ahead and start with question 1. Graph and analyze the function f of x equals 2x cubed. Um, describe its domain, range, intercepts, and behavior, continuity, and where the function is increasing or decreasing. Let me point out that this problem is not going to be as dense as this on the test. It might just be asking, you know, like, what is the domain? What is the range? Or where is the function increasing? Something like that. Um, but let's go ahead and get right into it. Here is my calculator. We're going to add a graph. And we're going to go, okay, uh, 2, what is it, 2x cubed? Okay, so that's what I'm looking at. Let me actually just drag it onto my paper so I can see it continuously and make it a little bit bigger. So let's look at this. This is a power function. So domain is going to be all real numbers. So we could write it all real numbers or we could write negative infinity to positive infinity. The range uh, is going negative infinity to positive infinity, so we could go all real numbers again. And then our intercepts. So in this case, the x and y intercept are both at the origin, so we can say that they're both going to be 0, 0. My end behavior, this is where we're talking about, okay, um, what's happening on the ends. And you can get this kind of from looking at the function. It is an odd or a cubic um, degree. And then we have a positive leading coefficient. So the end behavior, we could get it from that using our table or we could just look at the graph. It is uh, going up on the right side. So the limit and you have to use this limit notation. The limit as x approaches infinity of our function f of x is, is going up, so positive infinity. And then the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is going to be, well, it's going down over here, so it's going to be negative infinity. Um, continuity, this is continuous everywhere, so there's no point in saying... Um, it is discontinuous. There's no infinite discontinuities. So we could just say everywhere are all real numbers. Uh, and where the function is increasing or decreasing. So for this function, it's kind of weird. So it kind of, it's it's going up this entire time. And then it gets to this point, And this is called a point of concavity, where it's going from like, negative parabolic to upper parabolic and then it just keeps going up as well but at this point in the origin it's neither going up nor down so uh, we, we have to kind of take that part out and we're going to say um, it is increasing it's not decreasing anywhere that's pretty obvious so it is the function is increasing from negative infinity to zero we really have to take that zero out so parentheses around the zero, union, zero to infinity. Um, so that takes the, the, the zero out because neither one of these has that bracket. Oh, undo that. All right, it's thinking right now. Okay, bracket's gone. Uh, so that's problem one. Number two, solve the equation for x. Really, you want to start by isolating that square root. So square root of 2x minus 2 is equal to x minus 1. Then you're going to go ahead and square the entire side. Don't forget these parentheses. We're going to get 2x minus 2 equals, and let's kind of distribute this out, x squared um, minus 2x plus 1 and then set the equation equal to 0 so we'll get x squared minus 4x and then add 2 so plus 3 
And uh, this one's nice because it can be factored. So we're going to go 0 equals x minus 3, x minus 1. So factoring is going to be very important here on this test. And then uh, you're going to set each of those factors equal to 0. So x minus 3 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 3. And what minus 1 equals 0, x equals to 1. Um, the big thing to remember is with square roots, you can always end up with this kind of extraneous solution. So we need to check both of them. So the square root of 2 times 3 minus 2 plus 1, does that equal 3? So I'm just substituting 3 in. So I get 6 minus 2, that's 4. So I get square root of 4, which is 2 plus 1. Does that equal to 3? Well, yes, it does. So that problem is a solution. So x equals 3. That is possible for us. And then the square root of 2 times 1 minus 2 plus 1, does that equal 1? So square root of 2, that's going to get me 2. Minus 2, that's 0. So square root of 0 is 0 plus 1. Does that equal 1? Well, yes, it does. So we actually end up with two solutions. But you always got to go back and check for those extraneous solutions. Interesting. All right. Problem three is incoming. And uh, this one is saying, what is the end behavior of the graph of f of x is 2x cubed minus 5x plus 1? So this one looks, we're only looking at this leading term. And the 2x cubed, that's going to say, all right, that is an odd exponent with an even coefficient. So I know like that's going to be doing something like that. I don't really care if there are humps or anything that's happening. It's not like doing one of those. I don't care about that. All I care is about the end behavior. So my limit of f of x as x approaches infinity, what's happening on the right side is that it's going up, so going up to infinity. And then the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity. So what's happening on the left side? Well, on the left side is going down, so negative infinity. That's it. That's all this question is asking for. Number four, what is the greatest possible number of turning points of f of x equals 6x to the fourth plus 11x cubed? minus x squared plus x. We're not saying what, how many turning points there are, just what is the greatest possible number of turning points this function can have. And you get that strictly from the degree. It's just going to be 4 minus 1. This is the number of turning points. You're going to have the maximum of three turning points. So just remember that little tidbit of information. Don't confuse that. Over here we says, Solve the equation for x. So we kind of did this one, but notice how I have two square roots. So I'm just going to square both sides. And this one can get kind of big, but that's okay. Um, so when I square the right side, it just becomes x plus 11. On the left side, we could square this one. So I get 3x plus 10, and I hope I have enough room. Um, we're going to get plus 1 over here, plus 2 square root. 3x plus 10. So you square the first, that takes care of the square root. You square the last, I could see the 1 squared, that's 1. Take 1 times the square root of 3x plus 10, multiply by 2. So that's why it becomes 2 square roots. Um, and notice that I only have 1 square root now. Uh, so I want to isolate that. So I'm going to end up with 2 square root of 3x plus 10 equal to um, let's see, I get plus 2 on the 1, so I subtract 2, so that's going to give me plus 9. And subtract 3x here so from x, so it's going to get me minus 2x. And um, let's see, what would be the easiest way to go about this? We could divide by the 2, you could do that, but that would give me some fractions that I don't want to deal with. Um, so I'm going to end up squaring the entire side. Yeah, this is okay. Um, and we're going to get 4 times 3x plus 10 equal to, and then we square the four first, so 4x squared, square the last. Um, so that's going to be plus 81. First times the last, it's going to get me negative 18 times 2, so minus 
16. No. Sorry, that's a little bit off. Uh, so negative 18 times 2 minus 36x, and then plus 81. And then I have to kind of go through it and hopefully solve for this. So I'm going to get 12x plus 40 equal to 4x squared minus 36x plus 81. Um, let's see, does that get me anywhere? Well, I hope so. Um, subtract 12x and subtract 40. So set the equation equal to 0. So 4x squared uh, minus 48x subtract 40. So 81 minus 40 um, minus 121. Is there anything I can divide out from each of those? I don't think so. Um, so it looks like this problem is actually getting kind of big. Uh, let me see. What is 4? Let me get a calculator going. Let's see. What is 4 times negative 121? 4 times negative 121. It's negative 44. All right, so what I want to do is look at the table for negative 44 divided by x and see if any of those come out to be negative 48. Um, so let's see. Enter and then control T. Um, okay, I'm just looking for whole numbers. So 11 and 44, that's not 48. Oh, wait, no, 22 and negative 22, that makes zero. Hmm, did I make a mistake somewhere? Square the first. Oh, I did make a mistake. Dang it. Whoops. Okay, yeah, I don't want to get rid of that calculator. This is fine. I'm actually not going to uh, delete this from the video um, because I did make a mistake when I was writing this down, which is fine. That happens. Um, I'm just going to go back and fix it and see what I can do to repair it because I see it now. This is plus 10, so when I squared this, that should have been plus 10, which gets me plus 11, and I subtract it. Um, I'm pretty much going to erase everything after this line. Oh, there goes my calculator coming back. All right, so then uh, that's plus 11 minus 11. That's going to get me the 0. Um, and so I'm going to get 2 square root of 3x plus 10 equal to, well, x minus 3x, x negative 2x. And then I'm going to divide this by 2. Notice every time I make a mistake, I start showing it more work immediately. So square root of 3x plus 10 equal to negative x. And then I'll square this. Um, we're going to get 3x plus 10 equal to positive x squared. And then... I set it equal to 0, so 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 10. Um, and then we could factor that, so 0 equals x minus 5, x plus 2. I uh, set my factors equal to 0, so x equals... Set my factors equal to 0, so x equals 5. or x equal to negative 2. And again, you want to go back and check both of those, see if both of them work. So the square root of 3 times 5 plus 10 plus 1, does that equal the square root of 5 plus 11? So 15 plus 10, that's 25. We get square root of 25 is 5 plus 1, 
does that equal the square root of 16, which is 4? That doesn't work. I'm getting 6 equal to 4. That does not work. This is extraneous. So you're going to come back over here and you must label it as extraneous. You guys aren't professionals yet where you can just take the entire answer out. Um, we're showing our work on this. So you do need to label it as an extraneous solution. Now we're going to try the x equal to negative 2. So square root of 3 times negative 2 plus 10 plus 1 equals the square root of negative 2 plus 11. So negative 6 plus 10, that's 4. Square root of 4 is 2, so 2 plus 1. Does that equal negative 2 plus 11? That's 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So 3 equals 3. That is good. So this is our only answer, x equal to negative 2. But we did have to go through the work and show that 5 was extraneous. It's okay. Mistakes help us improve. Let's go ahead and go to problem 6. Divide using synthetic division. Okay, this isn't going to be that bad. Uh, there's going to be a little quick note here, but you're going to take x minus 2, set that equal to 0. You're going to get x equal to 2. Or you could just flip the sign. That's the number that goes into the corner, so 2. And we're going to take the coefficient, so 1, negative 1. Uh, don't forget we have a 0x squared. That's the little thing, the negative 9, and then the 18. So it's going to go 1, negative 1, 0, negative 9, 18. Uh, bring that 1 down, multiply 1 times 2, you get 2. Negative 1 plus 2, that's 1. 1 times 2, that's 2. 0 plus 2, that's 2. 2 times 2, that is 4. Negative 9 plus 4, that's negative 5. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. 18 minus 10 is 8. That's going to be my remainder, that last bit. And we start it by writing 1 degree lower. So it's going to be 1x cubed plus x squared plus 2x minus 5 plus 8 over what we divided by, which was x minus 2. So that's going to be... Uh, how you divide using synthetic division, make sure you write your answer in polynomial form with the remainder written correctly. Moving on to uh, question 7. The distance in meters that a person travels on skis can be modeled by that function. Use the remainder theorem to find the distance traveled after 45 seconds. So all we're doing is really substituting 45 in for t, but we're going to do it using synthetic division or uh, using the remainder theorem synthetic substitution. So we're going to put 45 into the corner and we're going to write our coefficient. So 0 0.2, 3, and then 0. We're going to bring the 0 0.2 down. We're going to multiply 45 times 0 0.2. So that's uh, dividing by 5. That's going to get me 9. I'm going to go 3 times uh, plus 9. That gets me 12. And then 45 times 12, that's 450 plus 90, um, which is going to be 540. 0 plus 540 is 540. So after 45 seconds, the distance that we've traveled on skis in meters is 540 meters. Moving on to uh, problem 8. Find the remainder. If that function is divided by x minus 5, is that binomial factor of the polynomial? So in this case, you're definitely going to want to use synthetic substitution that, or synthetic division that's very quick. So using synthetic division with this factor. So 5 goes into the corner. And we're going to write our coefficients. 1, negative 18, 60, 25. And then what we're going to end up doing is looking at the remainder, the value we put there. So we're going to bring the 1 down, multiply by 5, so that's 5, negative 18 plus 5, that's negative 13. 5 times negative 13, uh, that's negative 65. 
Um, 60 minus 65 is negative 5. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. And then we get 0. So whenever this remainder is 0, this means yes, x minus 5 is a factor. It's not telling us to write it in factored form now, uh, but other problems will ask that. But this is the step to get to say, is that even a factor? If you got anything besides zero, it is not a factor. The table below shows the town's population. Write a polynomial function that models the data. So this is definitely the only way to do this is to do it on the calculator. The way I showed you guys is to uh, do a list and a spreadsheet. So over here for A, I'll put Y for year and uh, P for population. Uh, so we're going year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's what we're given. And then 50, 50, 55, 10, 56, 08, 54, 96, 5, 2, 0, 1, 5, 0, 8, 9, 5, 0, 9, 5, 4, 6, 7, 5. All right. So from here, you want to see what the graph looks like. So let's get a quick graph menu, data, quick graph. And then we have to change these up. This is going to be my x or my y value in this case. And we're going to change the y to p. All right, so I can see kind of something happening here. To me, this looks kind of quadratic. So the last one is 4,675. So um, I can kind of see a quadratic function happening here. So I'm going to go, um, I'm going to turn it off. So to turn off this quick graph, because I want to get the quadratic function, I'm going to go Control, K, Delete. So that's gone. I'm going to come back up here to uh, C1. And since I know it's quadratic, I'm going to go Stat Calculations, Quadratic Regression. This is going to be my X list, which in this case is going to be the year. And my Y list, in this case, is going to be population. Everything else I can leave the same, so hit OK. And this is my quadratic function. It gives me all of these values down that I can use for A, B, and C. Um, everything else, it's important, but it doesn't really matter in this case. And let's go ahead and put it on the screen so I don't forget it because now I'm ready to write the model that fits the data. So I'm going to use these values. Um, it doesn't really matter what you guys round to. This question is not telling me to round to anything. So I'm going to say the model that fits the data will say um, the population, depending on the year, is going to be negative 41.05 x squared uh, plus 291.43x. And I'm just getting these numbers here. Um, and then C, because this is where the equation is. Plus 4950.79. So again, this is where that equation is. Um, Ax squared plus bx plus c standard quadratic and that's what I wrote here. So that's going to be a good model for our data. Number 10, I wonder how many I have left. I think I have a lot left. Number 10, determine the type of discontinuity of f of x equal to 6 divided by x minus 6 at x equal to 6. So I think the function should look something like this. So this is 6. So we can determine immediately that this is going to be a, uh, for the type of discontinuity at 6, this is an infinite discontinuity. Uh, you also want to determine if, or kind of remember how to do this with tables. So you're going to do x and f of x on the table. Um, and you're going to put, oh, that's an awful line. 
Let me make that straighter. More straight. Uh, you're going to put 6 in the middle. On the left side, you're going to go like, okay, 5.99. And you're going to get closer to 6, so 5.9. And then on the right side, you're going to do like 6.01. And you're just going to keep getting closer to 6, 6.1. So this is how we read those limits. And what we're going to notice is that on this side, it's going kind of up to infinity, and this side is going down to negative infinity the closer we get to 6. All right, number 11, again, solve an equation with uh, square roots, radical equations, radical functions. So we're going to subtract 4. We're going to get the square root of negative 3x plus 10. Well, I made that one too long. Equal to x minus 4. You're going to square both sides, always throwing in those parentheses. Negative 3x plus 10 is equal to x squared minus 8x uh, plus 16. And then set the equation equal to 0. 0 equals x squared. Negative 8x minus, uh, plus 3x is negative 5x. 16 minus 10 is plus 6. So then when we're ready to get what those uh, factors are, we're going to get x minus 3 times x minus 2. Set each of your factors equal to 0. So x equals 3 and x equal to 2. And then from there, always, always go back and check your solutions. So does 4 plus the square root of negative 3 times 3 plus 10, does that equal 3? So we get 4 plus the square root, that's, let me see, I could do it without the square root. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, plus 10 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Does that equal 3? Well, no, we get 5 equal to 3. So that's not true. Again, this one is extraneous. Uh, let's see if 2 checks out. So 4 plus the square root of negative 3 times 2 plus 10 equal to 2. Is that true? So we get 4 plus negative 6 plus 10. That's 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Does that equal 2? Well, I'm getting 6 equal to 2. So that also does not work out. So this one is also extraneous. So that means, in the end, we didn't make any mistake. It's just they didn't come out. So in the end, we have no solution. Make sure you write that in. There is no solution. But here's the work. Right, I'm sure I have a couple more. Another dividing problem. Um, again, you need to know how to do long division. This may not be in the review, but you need to know how to do long division. It will be on the test. Uh, so put the 1 in the corner. Write the coefficients 1, negative 8, 7, negative 15. And go through the algorithm. Bring the 1 down. 1, one times 1, that gets me 1. Negative 8 plus 1, that gets me negative 7. 1 times negative 7, that's negative 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0, negative 15 plus 0 is negative 15. So writing this out in polynomial form, this is going to be x squared. 1 degree lower than 3 is squared. Minus 7x, we don't have a constant because that's 0, so it's going to be minus 15 over x minus 1, my divisor. Number 13, for selling x cakes a baker will make b of x equal to x squared minus 5x minus 150, hundreds of dollars in revenue. Determine the minimum number of cakes the baker needs to sell in order to make a profit. Okay, so in order to make a profit. All right, so we need to figure out when x is equal to 0. I guess that's it. Just figure out when is x equal to 0. 
All right, let's do it. Um, hmm. All right, so if I want to do um, 0 equal to x squared minus 5x minus 150, the first thing that comes to mind is maybe factoring. I can see a 15 and a 10. Okay, well, that's, that's going to be it. So 0 equals x minus 15 times x minus plus 10. Um, so x equals positive 15 and x equal to um, negative 10. This one doesn't matter because he's never going to sell a negative amount of cakes. But in order to make a profit, well, 15 is in order to break even because we set it equal to zero. So in order to make a profit, he has to make 16 cakes. That's when he starts making profits. So after 16, that's when the baker will actually start earning money. It's not going to be like 15.1 because that just doesn't work. Can't sell 0 0.1 of a cake. So again, another solving equation one with radicals. You might notice like this comes up a lot. You might need to know it. So we add 8 to both sides. x plus 8 equals the square root of 4 minus x. We square both sides. So we get x squared, square the first, square the last. That's not squaring the last. Take the first times the last and multiply by 2 equals 4 minus x and set the equation equal to 0. I'm going to keep my leading coefficient positive. x squared plus x, so plus 17x. 64 minus 4, so plus 60 equals 0. Okay, um, and I need to hopefully find something that multiplies to be 60 that combines to be 17. Oh, there it is, uh, 12 and 5. So x plus 12 and x plus 5 equals 0. So x equals negative 12 and x equals negative 5. Always going back to check our answers. So does negative 12, oh, let me leave some room underneath. Does negative 12 equal the square root of 4 plus 12 minus 8? Well, negative 12 equals 16. Square root of 16 is 4. 4 minus 8 is uh, negative 4. So that doesn't work. This is extraneous. I'm not going to write it out this time, but that is ex I'll write it out. I'm being lazy. Extraneous. And then x equal to negative 5. Does negative 5 equal the square root of 4 plus 5 minus 8? Is that true? So negative 5 equals square root of 9 is 3. 3 minus 8 is negative 5. So that works out. So this one is our answer, x equal to negative 5. Let's see what else. That might be our last one. Oh, it's not. This is our last one. Number of bacteria in a swimming pool. There's our equation. X is the number of minutes that has passed. At what time are there 3,000 bacteria left in the swimming pool? Oh, so Y is going to be the bacteria. Okay, so we're going to say 3,000 equal to... 5,500 times the square root of 0 0.025x plus 0 0.1. Okay, uh, divide both sides by 5,500. Uh, so we're going to get 30 over 55. Let me see. That can be divided by 5 again. So 6 over 11. So we're going to get 6 over 11 equal to the square root 0 
x plus 0 0.1 you want to square both sides. This is kind of why I simplified. I don't want to square 3,000. Um, so 6 squared, that gets me 36. And then 11 squared, that gets me 121. 0.025x plus 0 0.1. So I'm going to have to start converting everything into decimals. I'm just going to jump into the calculator to do the rest of this for me. Um, let me see add a new calculator so 36 over 121 that's that we're going to subtract 0.1 all right so that's that and then we're going to divide by 0 0.025 hopefully it comes out to a nice number all right so that's not that bad um yeah, it was 0 0.025. Yes, okay. So x is 7.9 minutes. So at what time are there 3,000 bacteria left in the swimming pool? At 7.9 minutes. That's the answer we're going for. Um, Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. So this graphic organizer is really going to, I want you guys to think about the connection. So you guys are going to provide examples of the three functions that we really kind of looked at over the past couple of weeks. But look at the connections between each of them. Okay. How is a radical function the same as a power function? And then how is a power function really close to a polynomial function? Are they the same? How are they written differently? And then explain how each theorem is used. So between the factor theorem and the remainder theorem, what's the difference? What do they each mean? And then the true or false questions. When solving a radical equation, you should check for extraneous solutions. Definitely, that is true. I did it probably like four or five times on this review. The graph of a polynomial function may contain breaks, holes, gaps, or sharp corners. This is false. A polynomial function is continuous everywhere and differentiable everywhere. You don't know what that means, but that's a calculus term. And so that means it cannot have any of these discontinuities. Synthetic division is a shortcut for dividing a polynomial by a linear factor of the form x minus e. Um, that's pretty much the exact the exact definition I gave y'all. So there it is. That's true. And then this one looks like it might take some thinking. A polynomial function of degree n, where n is greater than 0, has at least one zero in the real number system. Um, is that true? Degree n, where n is greater than 0. So No, that's not necessarily true. Like, here's... um x squared so it's plus 4 so that's gonna look like this it doesn't have at least one zero it doesn't have any zeros in the number system so yeah that one's gonna easily be disproven false so if you still don't understand any of my explanations you really want that one-on-one -on -one help come get it before our test in a couple days my name is mr. Hernandez and I'm always here to help